Hi, welcome back to our special Florida Criminal Law TV series, Crime and Treatment, a series of short videos explaining how we use a new paradigm in criminal law. The old paradigm, crime and punishment, is not working, and that's abundantly clear. And so the states, as I mentioned earlier, have tried to do some rehabilitative help for people, and it's not working very well. However, we can create crime and treatment that is effective and does work, and it all starts with that one thing I referenced in the last video that's missing, and that is a proper diagnostic evaluation. What is a proper diagnostic evaluation? Because by now you've learned that sitting in front of a psychiatrist for 45 minutes, having chemical surgery performed on your brain without any nuclear imaging is a little bit unusual. Think about this for a moment. If you had a broken bone, like the 12-year-old in an earlier video, would you demand an imaging before any treatment of that organ commenced? Absolutely, it's a no-brainer. What if you have an operation on an organ or some part of your body in your chest cavity? Are you gonna have some form of MRI? You better believe it. The doctor would be negligent not to order one. Now consider this, when someone is pregnant, are they using different types of technology to obtain visual images as part of the diagnostic protocol? Of course, and we all know that. So when it comes to the most difficult to treat and the most important organ in the human body, we're not doing that? That's exactly the problem. And crime and treatment addresses that by using a technology for brain imaging known as SPECT. S-P-E-C-T, it stands for single photon emission computed tomography. Now first I'm gonna talk about the technology and later I'm gonna talk about how we use it in court. But first, let's talk about the technology. Basically, when a spec scan is done, someone is given a radioisotope on two different occasions. On one occasion, they'll be performing a concentration test. On the other occasion, they're going to be relaxed and resting. The reason is when you get two sets of images, the doctor can better make the diagnostic analysis. Is that all they're using? Is spec the doctor in a box? Absolutely not. Instead, what happens is the physician uses a number of other things as well. For example, what's known as psychometric testing, a patient history, a family history, and a number of other different psychological and psychiatric tests. By the time this process is completed, you end up with a massive three-ring binder, so not some little two-page report or something, but a three-ring binder that's gonna be filled full of information about the testing, about the brain imaging, and the treatment program. Now, normally when this is done, we could use a number of different clinics because SPECT brain imaging has grown rapidly since I first started using it in 2005. However, we exclusively use Amen clinics, and the reason we use Amen clinics is not because we're beholding to Amen clinics. I'm more than willing to use other clinics. However, there's a slight problem. When you want to use brain imaging in the courtroom, you have to have certain evidence uh, rules followed. And Amen Clinics can give me what I need. Most frequently for cases in Florida, people go to the clinic that's based in Atlanta. I advise them to budget at least two to three days for this type of diagnostic evaluation because just the evaluation is going to take days. Now, I want you to contrast that with how we treat people who have a bad alcohol abuse disorder or drug problem. There's this massive rush to treatment, race them to the clinic, we know what to do. Whereas with brain imaging clinics, they say, well, we don't really know what to, to do at this point until we have all of the evidence in front of us. And when you think about it, that makes sense because whether it's a trial or a sentencing hearing, Lawyers don't take cases to trial until they have all of the evidence discovered. So it's the same principle, and when you think about it, it's good medicine because you want to diagnose first and treat second. Now, in our next segment of Florida Criminal Law TV, we're going to be discussing how I use brain imaging in a criminal case.